While it may look like a cartoon character, this animal has given us some serious intel into its family tree and even the major geological events of its time. This is Platybelodon. Hi, I'm Talia Loewe Mary, and you're watching Paleologic. Today, we're talking about a scoop-faced, elephant-like animal lovingly nicknamed the Shovel Tusker. Platybelodon was a genus of likely five species of extinct animals that lived across Europe, Asia, and Africa. Platybelodon, which loosely means flat-tusked, was a member of the order Proboscidea. The only surviving family of Proboscidea is Elephantidae, which encompasses our modern elephants. Platybelodon are part of the now extinct Amabelodontidae family, though until very recently they were thought to belong to the Gomphotheridae family. Gomphotheres were widespread across all continents, except Australia and Antarctica, and first appeared somewhere around 25 million years ago and died out just about 8,000 years ago in the early Holocene. The spoon-jawed Platybelodon lived during the Miocene. They were slightly smaller than modern-day elephants, at about 3 meters long, and they likely weighed about 2 to 3 tons. Since its fossils were most often found near what would have been bodies of water, it was originally assumed that Platybelodon used its flat lower tusks in combination with its trunk to scoop up water plants. More recently, however, one study looked at the characteristic curved wear pattern on the lower tusks to try and understand Platybelodon's diet. The best current hypothesis is that these tusks, which are consistently sharpened, were used to slice vegetation. Unlike some extinct animals which are shrouded in mystery due to lack of fossil evidence, we actually have a pretty good picture of Platybelodon's frame and growth, thanks to a wealth of fossilized skeletons that have been found. One quarry in Mongolia revealed almost 10 complete specimens, most of which were very young platybelodons that likely got stuck in a bog-like area and died. An adult specimen from the site even had an unborn fetus skeleton between its pelvic bones, so we can see how platybelodon developed from the womb to adulthood. The abundance of platybelodon specimens that have been found have given us clues about more than just their eating habits. From these fossils, we know that platybelodon males and females had different tusk structures. This tusk difference, which is seen in a variety of species, is an example of sexual dimorphism, and usually occurs because males use their tusks for combat to win a mate. In platybelodon, males sport large upper tusks, which are smaller in the females. These tusks don't show any signs of wear, which means that they likely weren't used in combat or feeding. The fact that their lower tusks are the same in males and females further reinforces the hypothesis that their lower tusks were used for feeding and therefore necessary for all platybelodons, regardless of their sex. By contrast, the North American cousins of the platybelodon, Amabelodon, used their upper as well as their lower tusks for eating. Since both males and females equally used their upper tusks, there is no apparent sexual dimorphism present in the Amabelodon genus. The recent discovery of a new member of the Amabelodontidae family, Ephanobelodon jawai, revealed that this elephant form had no upper tusks at all. With every new species discovery in this order, paleontologists are further expanding our knowledge about the evolutionary history of proboscideans. Sometimes, fossilized animals reveal more than just secrets about themselves, but also the world in which they lived. The existence of Platybelodon, for example, actually gives us huge clues about one of the most important geological events of the Cenozoic era, the formation of the Tibetan Plateau. Exactly how and when the Tibetan Plateau uplifted remains a mystery to this day, but the animal fossils recovered from the area give us clues about its timeline. For example, giant rhinos from the Oligocene were found both north and south of the plateau, indicating that it wasn't high enough to prevent the exchange of large animals 33.9 to 23 million years ago. By the time Platybelodon existed in the Middle Miocene around 16 to 11.6 million years ago, 
The plateau was too high for animals to cross, since the many troves of platybelodon fossils are only found north of the plateau. As we discover more fossils of these unique spork jaws, we're sure to learn even more about them and their fascinating world.